Hello everyone, my name is Ulf and I'm a freelance percussionist and timpanist from Germany. I'm working with orchestras such as the Budapest Festival Orchestra, the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra in Munich, or Spira Mirabilis, who are based in Italy. And yeah, first let me show you around my practice room and then we will talk about a bit about music and my life being a percussionist. Come on! So, so what you can see here and what you just heard me playing is the marimba. Um, it has the same layout as a piano, as you can see. So these are the black keys in, in the piano and these are the white keys and it is all wooden and below you have metallic resonators um, to um, make a louder sound. And then we keep going and walking. This, most of you will know, um, it's the drum kit. It, it's what most people start with and are used to see. Uh, so I don't need to yeah, explain more about that. And then here we have the xylophone. Let me just go around. Um, it's kind of the small brother of the marimba phone. And uh, again, wooden bars, same layout, just sounding higher and sharper. Then we have the vibraphone with metallic bars instead of wooden. And we have a pedal to make it sound basically exactly like the pedal at the piano. So you press it and then it keeps ringing. Um, next to the timpanis. These are the biggest instruments or most heavy instruments of uh, all percussion instruments, I guess. Um, you see them in orchestras and they are, yeah, kind of the second most important after the concert master, I would say. Um, then you have the glockenspiel, the small brother of the vibraphone. Again, it's just sounding higher. It does have a pedal here. And same effect as with the vibraphone. And last but not least, you have the snare drum, um, which is kind of the well main technique instrument. And if you can play snare drum well, um, you used to play all the other instruments also well. As musician, I tend to say that we are sportsmen in two kinds. We are sportsmen with our body, like whatever instruments you play, you're using a part of your body which is moving and needs to be trained very precisely. But we are also sportsmen up here in our mind. Because whatever we have to play, which, whatever which instrument, we need to learn the piece itself. So the music, where do I need to move, how, how is the piece going. But also we need to learn how do we want to play it. So interpretation, do, do I make a crescendo, decrescendo, piano, fortissimo, whatever. So if you think of a sportsman, like don't know, a football player, a 100 meter sprinter, um, a, a skier, they mainly have to use their body and they are perfectly trained for that. But as a musician, we have two components and I think that makes it even more even cooler because it's um, it's even more complex to learn and to be proud of as well so yeah uh, I, I can show you a bit um, so for example for the snare drum um, there's a movement which goes from the fingers here so I'm using my fingers and when I play louder, 
I also use my wrist and my arm. So this is the body, the body component. But now if you think of any piece to play, you need to imagine the music you play with, or if you play alone, still need to imagine the music you want to play. But if you play with an orchestra, you need to imagine what they are playing. And yeah, I can give you a few examples of that. And uh, probably we will we'll dive into that later on in our talk. So let's start our tour around the orchestra instruments. Um, I want to start with the tambourine, an instrument you might have seen before and know where it is used, mainly in Spanish music but also in symphonies of several composers and styles. But yeah, the focus is on the Spanish Latin American music. Um, now in the next few excerpts I'm gonna play on different instruments. I'm uh, gonna play the excerpt alone and fade in some music and fade out so you get to hear how the instrument sounds on its own but also in the context with the music. Um, and first I'll start with the opera Carmen and the beginning of the fourth acto. Um, yeah, have fun and hope you can find some interesting things. Probably the most important instrument in the orchestra are the dims. There are several different forms of how they are built, but these ones are the typical orchestra ones uh, for big repertoire and um, yeah, you will see those mostly in orchestras. Um, I personally like them most to play because it is a lot of responsibility, but also a lot of power in a positive way that you have over the orchestra because you can form musical lines, you can help the orchestra and you are in very direct con contact with the conductor who is standing in front. And um, yeah, one of the kind of standard standards is Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And I'm going to play a bit of the ending of the first movement for you.
next up is Petroshka by Igor Stravinsky and it's for the glockenspiel and it's a totally contrast to what we have heard until now because it is very calm and has kind of this sleeping melody, repetitive, if you play it alone. When you play it with an orchestra, suddenly there are twists and changes um, which you wouldn't expect. So yeah, have fun. At the end, I will play you a short excerpt on the snare drum um, from Shostakovich's Seventh Symphony. Um, it is infamous for our instrument, the snare drum, because um, like the bolero, which you might know, um, it has a very long and steady crescendo from nearly niente pianissimo to fortissimo. Um, and that over the time of 20 minutes nearly. So you need to be very focused and keep the energy going all the time and you never have a break. So you really must be spot on and focused. Okay, enjoy. So, in the beginning I was talking about how musicians are sportsmen on two sides, the mental and the physical side. That does mean, of course, that we have to train and practice a lot until we can play in an orchestra. That means years and years of daily practice without any stop or break. Um, imagine a Pirlo, for example. When he started playing football, and until he became the world famous star and footballer he was, he had to practice so much and keep practicing while, he, while his career. So the same applies to us musicians. And 
I think this wouldn't be possible if the music would not give us something back, meaning a lot of emotions and power itself. Music is a very interesting thing because, I mean, you, you can't grade it or measure it in a way as you can measure like how much water you, do you have or how, how much weight you can pull. But still, it, it touches something inside you, which once you have started, you don't want to miss anymore. So um, this is something very deep connected with us humans. Basically, since the history of humanity, like a, a few thousand years ago, music is connected to the human body and human mind. Um, we can talk about that later on. And I mean, um, a striking as example is if you take Shostakovich's Seventh Symphony, which I played the small excerpt on the sna sna snare drum for you before. This symphony was played during the Second World War in a city, Leningrad in Russia, which was surrounded by the German army. And the Germans wanted to get the city and were there already for a very long time and basically all the citizens of this city were starving. They were eating cats and rats and you, d you know what, um, because they were so hungry for over a year already. And still they came together to play this Shostakovich symphony which are, which requires around 80 musicians and is 40-50 minutes long. And they came together, they rehearsed it for several days or I think weeks and then they played it. And they played it with so much energy because they felt it inside them and they played it on the radio and they played it via loudspeakers in the whole city for all the people within the city. And the German army could also hear the music and it had such an impact on them that they said, okay, if they can still play so energetic the music they love and they apparently live from then there's no way we can win this battle. And um, I mean, this is an incredible example of the power of music and how much emotions it can release. If in a situation where you can't think of anything else than drinking and eating, you have the power to come together to play such music I mean, what proof do you need else? Um, having said that, I think we are ready and I might have touched a few areas of interest for you. And yeah, I think let's go into talk face to face. Thanks for your attention and let's continue.